My name is Joel Anderson, and I got my first harmonica when I was two years old. Uh, probably mainly chewing on it. I have pictures of me when I'm <coughs> biting on it. Harmonica is of course my main instrument, and I would say that second to that it would be the accordion. And then of course I've always been cheating a little bit with the Irish tin whistle and a little bit of bow run as well. So when I was around nine years old or something in school you could choose an instrument to play and I actually applied for harmonica but there were no harmonica teachers of course so I started out playing the saxophone and did that for about four years uh, didn't think it was fun so I stopped and at my last saxophone lesson when I go out from the room I look to the left into the window and there's a pile of flyers that says do you want to try harmonica three times for free it's like well of course perfect so i left the saxophone in there took the flyer went out Then I started with these three lessons. This was Mikael Beckman up in Piteå. He's Sweden's first educated harmonica teacher. So I was extremely lucky to have such a guy in the same town as I grew up in. After a couple of years, when I was, I would say maybe 14 years old, 15 years old around there, I was searching on Honor's website for well for harmonicas and then i saw that they had published a new harmonica or were going to release a new harmonica a harmonica called the xp40 and they had a sound sample and i was like totally blown away like bam like whoa what's this and then it was rick epping who played an irish jig in a bluesier type of way on the xp40 I suppose that my father, he has listened a lot to different type of folk music styles and stuff, so he's been listening a lot to Irish folk music. So I probably grew up with it, or I did grow up, grow up with it, and it's probably laying there in the back of, of the head, just like an egg wake, waiting to crack open. So that was like the start of it, and I told Mikael, of course, but this, this is what I, what I want to learn. And then Mikael helped me to slightly kick me in the right direction. And well, here we are.
2011. Then I came up with a great idea that, well, hey, why not take the car and drive to Ireland and back home again? And I suppose, again, I was inspired by my mom and dad who actually did the same thing back in the 80s, I suppose. So I thought, hey, this would be a cool idea. Took out the passenger seat in the front, built a bed in the car, and then started the journey to Ireland, which went through Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, through England, over to Ireland, and then around the whole island, and then back home again. So it was a trip of about 8,000 kilometers. The harmonica was a very popular instrument in Irish music, because Irish people has never been famous for having a lot of money. And, um, well, they had to play what what was cheap and what was widely available. And harmonicas, they were extremely cheap in the, like, the end of the 19th century. And uh, they were usually farmers, so they were working out on fields and stuff. And the harmonica was an instrument that was easy to bring with you when you were working. So the harmonica was very popular. And then uh, in the like 19, starting of 20th century, like 1910, 1920, around there, then the uh, one row accordion, melodion, came into the picture. And it's tuned more or less the same way as the harmonica. It has 10 buttons and the harmonica, the diatonic harmonica has 10 holes. The uh, melodion was easier to play. It was way louder. And uh, yeah, why bother playing harmonica though? Of course it was bigger to carry around, but... And uh, you could be heard when you were playing. People didn't have to be that quiet when you were playing. So then the harmonica nearly died out in, in Irish music. From what I know in uh, the 60s, in Ireland, there has always been a tradition of learning, teaching Irish music in the regular schools. And they usually have done this on the tin whistle, penny whistle. And during the 60s, either it was Ireland or it was Honer who came up with a brilliant idea that they should try to teach it on harmonica. So Honer actually had a harmonica factory in Galway during that time period and producing harmonicas. But I suppose because that came to an end, and I guess one of the things was because the harmonica is quite sensitive because it's a wind instrument with moving parts. So you blow air into it, which means that everything you have in your mouth ends up into the harmonica. So it requires a lot of attention to if you have been eating before playing, and also it requires then a lot of service. While the penny whistle or tin whistle, which is usually made out of plastic or metal, can just be washed and rinsed out, and there's no moving parts in it. So it would be way easier to, to clean and maintain. I guess that that might be one of the reasons why. And then it, well, I wouldn't say died out, but it, it wasn't gaining in popularity after that. Yeah, the main instruments that I've always been fascinated with is the uh, fiddle, the violin, or the and the accordion. So these are the two main types of instruments that I like to listen to. And my approach to Irish music on the harmonica is to try to imitate a cross between these two instruments while playing. So for example, you would have a uh, an accordion would have their their basses. So they would often use their basses in like backbeat vamping. And this you can achieve the same thing on the harmonica with the so-called vamping. So things like And that's something that the fiddle, the violin, can't do, of course. But the thing that the fiddle can do is the fiddle can usually play a lot of like double notes, drones and more stuff like that. A lot of like octaves and stuff, which the accordion, well, it can, but it's very rarely done. But on the harmonica, it's not easy, but you can, after you learned it, easily play with drones, such as... And then combining those two. And an 
another thing also that the fiddle is capable of doing is bending notes because they can slide on the fretboard so they can get those or they can get the they rarely go maybe not that deep in bends but you can just hear like the attack of the notes like So for me, with the harmonica, I'm able to bring the best parts of two worlds, more or less. One important technique in Irish music would be a technique called tongue switching. Because Irish music is originally fiddle music and written for like violins and flutes and these kind of instruments, they can sometimes contain like big melodic interval jumps, which means on the harmonica that we have to jump between maybe hole four to hole six, back to hole four, back from hole four up to hole seven, and back to hole four again. And of course you can do this with single note playing, but that would sound something like this. Which to me at least doesn't sound very good. If you do the same phrase, but with tongue switching, it sounds like it's much smoother and it's much faster. With single note playing, you have to have time to move your head or move the harmonica. With tongue switching, you're only moving your tongue, or in my case, I'm moving my tongue and my jaw. So. It's extremely easy. And you have the same thing um, more visually if you take an accordion. Because on the accordion, this would be one of those one row 10 button accordions. Uh, one of the instruments that almost killed the harmonica in Irish music. Um, but uh, that same phrase. So this button here, that would be your whole four. This would be your whole five, this would be your whole six, and this would be your whole seven. So that same phrase on this would then be... And then of course you have... Which is of course on the accordion, it's way easier to play. Because then you're, then you're just jumping with your fingers between the buttons. But uh, of course, or obviously we're not using our fingers when playing harmonica. So yeah, that's one of the like main techniques that I use and that I believe is necessary in Irish music to get the, the fluidity in the music, to get the flow. Today, musically, I would be inspired by, I mean, partly all the great players that's out there. But also to me, in Irish music, usually means that you have to build up a repertoire of tunes. So, I mean, I'm listening to Irish music every day, and whenever I hear a new tune or a tune that I really like, I just put it up on the to-do list. And that's that's something that, that keeps me going. And yeah, want me to, to push the boundaries and go further. Recently, I've uh, played a lot of accordion, actually, when learning new tunes. So the good thing again with the accordion or the melodion one row is that its tuning is almost identical to the harmonica, which means that I pick out the tune and I try to learn it on the melodion. And then once I've learned it on the melodion, I can transfer it to the harmonica uh, through through my head, I can transpose it from the finger positioning to the so-called mouth positioning. And again, Irish music is about learning tunes, tunes, tunes. So I usually will, of course, learn new tunes, and then I go back sometimes. I have a list of the tunes that I know, and sometimes I like to go back to rediscover tunes that I've learned like a long time ago, 
And sometimes it actually means that you have to relearn the tune because it's like, oh, that one I forgot. <laughs> so it's great. And that again with the sessions, it's like then a new phase pops up in the session and then it's like he's playing in one of those tunes that you learned way back when that you hardly know. But oh, Jesus, yeah, that tune. <laughs> great. I need to go home and practice now. <laughs> So I love the sessions in Irish music. Everyone is the same, there's no pressure or anything. You're sitting in a pub, you're sitting around a table, you're having fun, you're drinking a few beers, you're talking, you're playing a few tunes, you're facing each other. So to me at least it's not like a blues jam where you're usually on a stage, it might be amplified, you have to put your name up on a list or something and say that I want to play this and this song. The session is so much more relaxed to me. Come there and sit down and then when you start a tune you are the leader of this tune or this set of tunes so usually it's that you play this tune three times around when you played it three times around either you look around on the other people or you can say Hop! and that means that something is gonna happen now then all the other musicians they start to look at you and see okay which tune is he going to play now and then you just change tune, without any breaks or pauses or anything. And then the other people, if they know the tune, they'll join you. If they don't know it, they'll sit, listen and enjoy. So it's always, it's always a great atmosphere and people are happy and, and... Of course, all sessions are different. Some sessions are a lot slower than others. And the, I usually prefer the little more livelier and fancier ones with people almost dancing on the tables and there's beer all over the place and people shouting at each other and just good fun good crack so to speak to me it's it's very like it's very like relaxing although a lot of times it might not look like it <laughs> so yeah it's great great like friendship and and yeah it's really really nice <laughs> The factories in the world producing harmonicas, for example, Honer, Seidel, Suzuki, and you have a few Chinese brands as well, they're mass producing harmonicas. They're pumping out like millions and millions of harmonicas each year, which means that the quality on these instruments, it is fairly good, but if you want something that's better, then you can't get it from the factories. So I started to take them apart and see what was going on, more or less as soon as I started to play harmonica. And I've been extremely fortunate to meet a lot of people such as Dick Schoberg, Brendan Power in England, Rick Epping in, in Ireland, Joe Felisco, and a lot of these great customizers who has a huge knowledge about customizing and rebuilding harmonicas. And I've been very fortunate in that way, in that sense that they've shared a lot of their knowledge with me. From all of these great customizers and makers, creators, then I've created my own thing. I started to professionally sell harmonicas in 2013. And I started my company in 2016. So I've been doing this now full time for five years. To me, this means that I have a separate workshop that is 30 square meters, which is fully equipped with CNC milling machines, CNC laser machines for cutting, engraving, big manual milling machines and all the other tools like bandsaws and belt sanders and everything you can think of. I mill new harmonica combs, I modify the cover plates on them. Recently I started to 
mill cover plates in wood. And uh, then of course we have the reed work. And the reed work in a harmonica is the most important part. It doesn't really matter what kind of comb or covers you have if you have bad reed work. So basically I could make more or less anything. It's just the imagination that puts the, the borders. I have too many ideas about new harmonica designs and things that could be corrected and made in a lot of better ways because I believe that in the harmonica world there has been a lot of like it it has always looked like this and it should always look like this if you look at the the uh, first like chromatic harmonicas they were invented there back in 1910-1920 in the in the beginning of the 20th century and the uh, design hasn't really changed that much it is, of course, a nice design, but I believe that it could definitely be improved, especially now when we're in the 21st century. Like custom harmonica, to me at least, you should be able to hit every note very hard, like with force. Not that you should like turn your lungs outside in on it, but it should never like choke on you. But at the same time, you should be able to play all those nice bends and also the overbends, overblows and overdraws on it. When I started out learning harmonica, um, I didn't have internet or anything like that. So I would say that it was, I mean, it was easy to get in hold of, of learning material because I had a teacher, but the good thing that internet wasn't existing, or at least we didn't have internet at the time, was that I wasn't overwhelmed with all the information, all the music styles and everything that's available out there today. And a good friend of mine who plays Irish music, he, he said that back in the days I went to the library and I checked what kind of new recordings they had of Irish music. I rented the recording from the library, took it home, played it. I learned all the tunes from the A side of the, this would be an uh, LP. And then I flipped it over and then I listened to it and then I learned all the tunes on the other side. And then sometimes, of course, I had to re-rent it because some tunes might be hard or I didn't have the time to learn all of them. But today there's so much tunes, so much information. It's very, very important today that to really, really focus on one thing because it's so easy that you find, oh yeah, Irish music, it's great, it sounds cool, yeah, great, and then you'll try it for half an hour, and then it says pling in your phone, and then, oh, Jesus, what's that? Oh yeah, this guy, he put up a new video, let's see, oh yeah, blues, ah, cool, I might want to learn a few new blues licks. So it's like, our brain is like ding dong, ding dong, bouncing all over the place. So yeah, I think it's, it's very important to stick to the same thing. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stick for the same thing for the rest of your life or for the rest of the year, but at least try to do it like for the next uh, practicing session. So do it at least for two hours when you're practicing. That now it's only Irish music or now it's only blues music or whatever you are practicing. Focus on that. And then if you want to go one step further and uh, take one week with practice. Limit yourself. Only listen to Irish music during this week. Only practice Irish music during this week. Which means that you are in this bubble, so to speak, of Irish music. And then, of course, the same thing when you start to dig in to another music style. And then you can maybe learn Irish music one week. The next week you head into the blues bubble of music and teaching and practicing. I mean, it's tough, but try to focus on one thing and I think that will definitely help you. My hope for the harmonica is that it will be accepted as a real proper instrument, same as the, like, the violin or the grand piano or trumpets and saxophones. And we are heading for better times for sure. But it's still kind of like that, oh, what do you play? Oh, I play harmonica. Oh, do you play anything else? And we don't want that, of course. I mean, people need to realize that the harmonica is a fascinating instrument that's possible and capable of playing 
any music style as good or even better than a lot of the other instruments such as violins or grand pianos, for instance. And then, of course, it's like a lot of beginners say, it's in a handy size. And I usually tell them that, yes, but wait until you carry around the bag with 55 of them. <laughs> but yeah, it is a handy size of it. And the good thing with it is that you can just take it and you can pick it up and you can You can just play it. <laughs> <laughs>